Assalamu alaikum. Yaqeen Institute, an organization that's had real impact on our work, has written a study on the effects of Islamophobia on Muslim youth titled Internalized Islamophobia, Exploring the Faith and Identity Crisis of American Muslim Youth. So what does it mean for racism or Islamophobia to be internalized? This is a subconscious acceptance of the inferiority of your identity group, usually a minority group, in relation to another or the majority. The effects of racism in the US, primarily the issue of blacks and whites, on children has been well documented. The famous black doll study found that black children found white dolls to be more beautiful than black dolls. Among Muslim kids aged 5 to 9, according to one study, it wasn't uncommon to notice the development of dual personalities. In conversations, they used the term American and Muslim as mutually exclusive. They felt that they had to choose between being Muslim and being American. And they adjusted based on their situation. The study results note one in three were not comfortable with others knowing that they were Muslim. One in two did not know that they could be Muslim and American at the same time. And one in six would at times pretend not to be Muslim. Wow, now these are kids, and it only gets worse as they grow into teenagers and young adults. Instead of degrees of blackness in relation to racism studies, the factor here is the level of Muslimness. How public and observable is your religiosity? Teenage girls who have admitted to struggling with hijab, a very observable indicator of Muslimness and even a political symbol in our times, have said that they don't want non-Muslims to think that they are oppressed, i.e. that they are forced to cover up. They also don't want the older women of their community thinking that they're negligent in their religious devotion. And at the same time, they didn't want their peers to think that they weren't cool or they weren't pretty. They were worried about labels that come with their fashion choices. Am I, too con am I too conservative? Am I too liberal? Am I too extreme? Am I cool? Am I beautiful? Will I fit in? Will I be an outcast? It's unfortunate that the hijab is not more commonly seen for what it is, a part of a woman's personal relationship with her creator. Another issue in parallel with perceived Muslimness was that the youth felt that they had to constantly prove their Americanness. They struggled against the stereotype that all Muslims are Arab or that all Muslims are from the Middle East or that all Muslims are foreigners. The reality is that Muslims hail from every country, every race, every culture. The youth surveyed expressed exhaustion with dealing with this categorization. This isn't solely an American Muslim issue, of course. It's a classic one of identity crisis. British Muslims, for example, according to a study, had similar experiences. Their intentions, their motivations were constantly being doubted and questioned. And those that couldn't reconcile the fact that they are British and Muslim tended to have negative views of the West and were especially isolated. Most people can see how social isolation and an identity crisis can be a stepping stone to illegal behavior or even extreme radicalization. This is one of the many reasons our work in education is crucial. And besides the inward, the emotional state of individuals, their sense of identity and belonging, there's also the very real physical encounters, the Islamophobic incidents. Studies clearly show a high fear of Islamophobic attacks by young Muslims, especially for young women who wear a hijab. More than two thirds of young Muslims surveyed said they had at least one Islamophobic incident or, or encounter within the previous year, most of them being girls. A British government initiative stated that of 584 Islamophobic attacks taking place in 2012 and 2013, 60% were against women, 80% wearing the hijab. Speaking of the hijab, the following statistic probably shocked me the most, personally. All 15 of the 15 girls in a study that wore the hijab said that they've contemplated taking it off due to fear. Wow. They've explained that they've been in situations where they felt threatened. Not to encourage the notion of competition between males and females, there are two points worth mentioning though. The girls stated that they did not resent the hijab itself but they did feel frustrated that Muslim men didn't seem to be making an effort to also present themselves publicly as Muslims. One girl commented, I think it's unfair that they get to walk around in t-shirts, shorts, that they just blend in. Secondly, and on a similar note, the girls expressed frustration with Muslim leadership, who in their eyes did not understand the pressure that women were regularly going through, and that they employed double standards when speaking to men and women. We'll unpack some of these issues and more in a future course on gender and society, inshallah. In order to really appreciate the effects of Islamophobic incidents on Muslims, mental health experts have stated that religious discrimination, coupled with the awareness of being devalued in society, affects individuals' health and their mental health. For the non-Muslims watching this, I think it's worth illustrating some of the harassment that Muslims face regularly. Women report being taunted, 
with comparisons to terrorists. They've been yelled at to take off their hijab using the F word, the B word, etc. They've been accused of being foreigners, being illegal immigrants, or being relatives of terrorists. For example, go back to Afghanistan and referring to Osama bin Laden. Go back to the Middle East, or my personal favorite, go back to Islam and take Obama with you. It's a good indicator of the level of ignorance of many of these perpetrators when they yell such xenophobic comments. And they're yelling at people who were born and raised in the very same country, in the US or the UK. Unfortunately, the effects are real. Half of women surveyed said that these incidents make them question their British identity, their American identity. Hence, this is one of the themes of our courses. There is no contradiction between being American and being Muslim, being Canadian and being Muslim, being British and being Muslim. Just as there are Egyptian Muslims, Pakistani Muslims, Nigerian Muslims, Indonesian Muslims, there are American Muslims. And forgive me if I'm being very repetitive, but just as there are American Christians, American atheists, American Jews, American Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, there are American Muslims. All right. Another effect of the Islamophobic climate on the youth is a crisis of identity formation. They don't have a sense of belonging that is, in fact, a basic human need. And this leads to anxiety and isolation, understandably. Remember, a young person struggling with identity and belonging is perfectly vulnerable to being influenced towards a life of crime or even terrorism. Let's talk a little bit about personal experiences and, that, and how they can affect our view of God or religion. Surveys showed clear indication that personal issues, whether it's family or culture, affected how the young see God and their religion. For example, someone who comes from a culture that they feel is very regressive in some aspect, in some way, may be more likely to internalize insults against Islam and accept that there is, in fact, a clash between Islam and modernity. Also, people's relationship with their parents at times affects their relationship with God. If their parents are restrictive or overly restrictive, they feel that God and religion is restrictive. Whether they felt loved or abused by parents affected how they perceived God. Overall, it's important to note that young Muslims, especially second generation, that is, their parents are immigrants, have a hard time distinguishing between culture and religion in the way that they were brought up. Other pers personal experiences that impact the individual's faith is their community grievances. <clears throat> it is not uncommon for young Muslims, and especially girls, to feel alienated from their mosques and from their communities. The irony is that mosques are supposed to be a place of solace, a place of spiritual rejuvenation. But for some, it's just an added stressor in their day, either due to clashing cultures or generation gap, basically misunderstandings between the younger and the older between those born here, those born abroad. Some report that their mosque leadership have some very negative cultural views of women or the youth, and that their needs are consistently, regularly being ignored. Youth surveyed state that they have to remind themselves that Muslims don't always represent Islam. And this is very true. Unfortunately, this indicates that young Muslims are having a hard time finding a people and a place where they belong, as well as constantly struggling to reconcile their religious values, their ideals, that stem from their faith and the way that they are treated. Of course, as always, there's a lot more to say, but I'll leave you with this. Islamophobia is a very real issue and it has very real impact on our youth. And this should be a concern for everybody. I'll see you very soon. Assalamu alaikum.